Amen. God bless you. Welcome to Christ Unbarred. Uh, we got a full truck, but I'm sure you've noticed Sharon is not next to me. Um, she is okay, so let me start off with that. Uh, but <clears throat> she ended up uh, in the ER last night. Uh, that's why you're getting this video late. So, um, but like I said, just so you don't worry, she's okay. Uh, but let me go back now. Yesterday was Tuesday, <clears throat> which is our normal day of doing uh, the Christ Unbarred. And we were here in the church, and uh, she's had this really bad headache, you know. So she wasn't feeling too good to start off. And then you know how we usually do the Christ Unbarred while they're having a prayer. So she was in prayer, praying, uh, and she was getting ready to, she was going to be in there just for a little bit, and then she was going to come in here so we could do the episode. And uh, so she was in prayer, and then she came to me, and said, before we do the episode, she was, I feel really weak. I'm really hungry. You know, I said, well, we could, I'll go, go, let's go get something to eat, you know, before we do, you know, the Christ and Bard. So we went and uh, went to this, this uh, taqueria and um, even sitting there eating, she's like, she ate a little bit. She was, I don't feel so good. She said, let's go back to the church. We came right back to the church and um, I came in here actually to start setting up so we can do our recording. I was in here maybe three minutes and then I hear our son Abraham goes, David. So um, I walked out of here in the hallway and Sharon was on the floor. Um, apparently what happened is um, she got up. Well, she was already had the headache. She was already not feeling good. I think she got up really quick and you know how sometimes you get dizzy and um, we don't know if she passed out or tripped or both, but she fell face first without, we think she passed out because if you, if you fall in, your, your natural tendency is to brace your arms, you know, to stop it. Um, she just fell just boom, face like her whole, um, really scared us. When I went out there, she's on the floor um, she was, her breathing sounded really weird. We called 911 and uh, instantly started praying for her in the name of Jesus, you know, and she kind of woke up, couldn't talk. Her breathing was, we didn't know what was going on. And um, called 911, uh, when they pulled up, they came, paramedics came really fast. We're downtown Modesto, so we're really close to everything. Uh, and then the ambulance came, and uh, she was still breathing weird, but she was at least looking at us. She was holding her, my hand. I was telling her, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. You're okay. I'm here. I'm not going to leave you. And she was just staring at me. I, um, we brought her a pillow, but we were scared to move her because I didn't know if she had broken something. You know, we, we were still trying to figure out what was going on. And then she kind of pointed to her jaw that she fell, that she fell on her jaw. She couldn't move her jaw. So I think, I actually think she dislocated it because it was not allowing her to touch. She was like this, like she couldn't move. She, you know, like, like she couldn't move her jaw. And um, later on, I found out that she hit so hard that it locked her jaw or something and it knocked her tongue back. So she was actually choking on her tongue. She could breathe, but it was very hard. And um, when the paramedics came, they instantly got a neck brace, and when they put her on her back to lift her to the gurney, she said something popped, and all of a sudden, boom, it loosened her jaw, and she was able to talk. And, um, man, <clears throat> you know, the way she fell, I'm really surprised she didn't break her jaw. I'm really surprised she didn't break her teeth. I'm really surprised her teeth didn't, you know, cut into her gums or even her tongue. There are so many things that could have got, gone wrong that I know that the Lord was watching over her, you know. So um, they took her and uh, to merge, they took her in the ambulance to the hospital, which was eight minutes away. And um, I, I followed. I went over there. Well, I was looking for her. <laughs> I couldn't find her ID or nothing. So I stayed back for maybe 10 minutes. And then I, I went and, uh, and I met her there. They let me into the back immediately, and by that time, she was talking normal. Um, but obviously, when she's there, they wanted to run tests, so they checked her blood, they checked her blood sugar, her blood pressure, they 
did a CT scan to make sure she didn't break or fracture anything because she had had a previous, you know, surgery, you know, her brain surgery. So um, they checked her out. And um, by the time they, I went to pick her up, it was 1 a.m. <clears throat> and she was, you know, she was feeling sore and joked a little bit. And she's like, I was like, well, I guess uh, we're not doing the Pando episode. <laughs> You know, and she and she can you believe it? She goes, you want to go back to the church and do it? I said, no, we're getting you home, you know, and I said, I know the guys are going to be worried, guys and ladies. I know they're going to be worried, but they'll understand. So um, today is now Wednesday night and uh, she didn't come because she was not um, she was going to come being very adamant that she was going to come to the church, you know, because it was Wednesday Bible study and um so finally around three o'clock she was asleep you know and i didn't want to wake her up and finally she came out to the living room she's like i think i'm just gonna stay home and that's what i wanted to hear you know and uh, she was what about pando she's over here worried about you guys and i i was like I'll, I'll do the episode myself and i'll explain to them i said and um of course they're gonna they're, <laughs> they're gonna be glad you didn't come in because i i guarantee they're gonna want you to rest also. So here I am doing the podcast, you know. Um, So that's the story of what happened. And, uh, you know, she's home. And um, I just text her right now because it's a little late because I had to have Bible study. And then we had some fellowship after because people usually don't want to leave the church right away. So uh, I just been here. and as you can see, the truck is full of mail. It's going to get to a point, guys, where I can't do the shout outs, but for now I will. But you look at this. This is this week's. You know, I know that might not be a lot to some ministries, but to, to my little truck, it's going to flatten the tires, man. Uh, <laughs> so, but I do want to give some shout outs. But Sharon sends her love, and she will be back. <clears throat> by the next podcast and you'll see her for Sunday service also you know she's fine uh just a little bruised she she feels a little bruised like on her knee and you know she fell in her face and I forgot she think she said her shoulder was a little sore and the doctor said you know you're gonna feel sore but you're fine and that was my thing as I thought was it a seizure was it a stroke and thank god it was none of those of course it's not good to pass out and fall face first of course that's not good but you know, just glad to hear it was not a seizure or a stroke, you know, and uh, it, it's scary, man. You know, it's scary to see her like that, and, and it scared me to, it just doesn't feel good. You know, I'm seeing her on the ground and not being able to breathe, you know, and, and I didn't know what was going on, and all I could do was pray in the name of Jesus, because that's all we got. So anyways, um, <clears throat> we got some mail here. Let me bring those over here. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, before I forget, I on the last episode, I told you I was going to show you the Christ Unbarred wall in our church lobby. And I forgot to put it in the video. So I just took a video of it so you can see. So let me show you that first real quick. We have more stuff we're going to add. There's even stuff in some of these letters we're going to add. But everything that comes in during the week, we stack it in the truck. You know, so this is all the mail from the last, since Wednesday. Wednesday to Wednesday. So this is a week's worth. And um, so there's some things here that that are going to be added on there. Some poems, some pictures, uh, some artwork. But anyways, let me show you. Here it is. I'll talk over it. There it is. So that's um, the welcome sign. Um, That's a really nice. So Sharon set this all up. That's Sharon's brother with the, see him standing by Sharon's mom with the purple. That's her brother. The one that's serving 25. He's on his last 12 months, I think, or so. Look at this nice drawings. We have some poems and just different things right there in the center. Um, It says, put your hand here. A lot of people do that, actually. Um, whoever's letter that is. Got some photos, some artwork, cool stuff. Look at that necklace. 
that uh, you sent Sharon. Somebody sent it to Sharon. Um, look at that artwork on the right, man. That's all ink. With the, with the, that's hard. That's hard to do. So, um, okay, <clears throat> there we are. <clears throat> so there's the wall. It keeps getting more and more stuff in it, on it, and uh, it's it's a blessing. Um, so the first one, Patrick, uh, brother from Gatesville, uh, I want you to know. I know you were concerned that we we did receive your book. Um, Sharon um, showed it to me right before all this craziness happened with her and um so yes we did get that and uh i know you really wanted to know so we did receive it um juan gonzalez thank you so much from estelle unit huntsville texas um and we got all the prayer requests lorenzo torres union correctional institution rayford florida um ruben cano if i if some of these i read last week i apologize i don't think i i don't think so but if so I'm sorry, I'm just rereading it again. You gotta understand, this whole thing with Sharon kinda just threw me off, but. Um, anyways, Ruben Cano, he says, you know Seguin, Texas. That's where my family is from. You're in Beeville, Texas. Shout out, McConnell unit. Um, Cecil Ray Garcia, Clemens unit, Amarillo, Texas. Praise God, thank you. I, I appreciate the fact that you appreciate um, the content that, that we put out. Uh, John uh, Paul Garcia Jr., CMC East Facility, San Luis Obispo. Um, I don't know if I shouted this one out yet or not. I'm not sure, but if I did, well, I'm shouting it out again. And um, who else here? Uh, Juan Pablo Cisneros from Florence, Arizona. You said uh, you include a photo on here. So let's see if it's still in here or, yeah, it's still here. So Sharon is going to be putting it up on the wall. Uh, Leonard Ro Roque or Roque Jr., Troy, North Carolina. Uh, Hatchens Unit in Dallas, Texas, Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Uh, Jaime Javier Garcia, and you have something for the display also. And we did, you say a shout out to Hollis. Hollis is a young man that you see worshiping. Oh yeah, you have your certificate, Spiritual Growth Award. Praise God! Yeah, we will. We are going to put that up uh, on the wall, and we love the fact that you shouted out uh, Young Hollis. He's the one that's always worshiping uh, the little young man that you see, and uh, he got real happy when we told him. Anytime you guys give a shout out to anybody here at the church, we always let them know. Um, Tyrell Alex. Tyrell Alexander in Foothills Correctional Institution, Morganton, North Carolina. Hopefully I said it right, uh, but that you're right. He says, pin for a new address. You're right, because this is the first time we've gotten anything, so we're going to be adding that pin to, uh, where are we at? Oh, right there. Right there, to the map. I wish we could see it more clear. That glare, man, kind of kills it, but... Anyways, um, Daniel Aguilar Moreno, you have something for for the wall, and uh, we got that also. That's going to be going up on the wall. This is pretty cool. Um, let me see. That's tight. So we're going to be adding this to the wall. Thank you so much. And that's Daniel Aguilar in Iowa Park, Texas. Uh, we have one here, uh, Sean Baines, I believe, from Tampa, Florida. And uh, <laughs> he asked, he goes, hey, what's up to the, the young lady that was worshiping with the red hair? Um, she was worshiping on one Sunday. I can't remember what Sunday it was. Uh, the reason she hasn't been back is she's not, she doesn't come to our church. She was actually a friend of our uh, bass player and our guitar player, and he invited her to come lead worship. But yeah, you're right, man. It was, she did really great, and we're hoping that um, she comes back. Uh, really nice young lady. Um, we have Manuel Rangel, uh, Clemens Unit, Amarillo, Texas, with some prayer, re we got your prayer request, brother, praise God. Uh, we have Daniel L. B., Imperial, California, San Bernardino, California. And uh, he says, give a shout out to Paul, the producer of Kilroy. 
And uh, so I did call him up, and Paul is super excited. He are, he's already getting feedback from pastors he knows calling him and saying, hey, you know, so-and-so is in prison right now, and they saw your movie Kilroy. So Paul is super hyped and excited. And um, so, yeah, shout out to Paul. Uh, James, let's see. James Poffenberger, Belleville, Texas. And uh, you sent something to, actually, you attentioned it to my brother, my little brother, Angel. Uh, and then you sent some artwork. So we're going to be putting that up. I, like I said, if it's in this stack, it hasn't gone on the wall yet, but it will now after this week. So actually, man, my brother Angel was here today. So um, I'm going to let him read that next time I see him and in a few days. Um, Joseph Pavesi. Charlotte Correctional Institution, uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for for uh, watching us. You know. Okay. What else do we got here? <clears throat> um, Sizemore S. Sizemore in uh, West Columbia, West Virginia. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. And I think that's a new place. Um, Justin Ferguson, Beaver County Jail in Beaver, Utah. And um, you had some good questions. I did write down here so I can maybe approach these questions later. Uh, you had some questions about the resurrection and whether we go to heaven now or later. Actually, I might, maybe, I might talk about that today. Let's put that to the side right now. Haven't made up my mind yet. Um, Juan Carlos Perez from Rocheron, Texas. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate you. I know you sent a photo inside. And um, thank you so much for your testimony of the things that you shared. And uh, we appreciate it. You know, and uh, God is good, man. God is really good. And that's awesome. Let's see. Um, Daniel L. White out of Holden, West Virginia. Um, I appreciate you saying that I'm your pastor. That is um, humbling to me. I thank you and appreciate that you feel that way. Um, I just try to share the Lord, you know, in a way that I wish somebody would share the Lord with me, you know, and that's, that's all, you know, that's what I'm trying to do, you know. So, <clears throat> Juan Javier Cervantes, Beaumont, Texas, God bless you. Got your letter here. Praise God. And of course, we are your family. You do not have to pretend we're your family. We are your family. This is House of Rest, the place uh, where the Lord rests his name. And uh, I just appreciate you, you know. Uh, Tyler Melbourne Cook, Tampa, Florida. Brother, you are my brother, man. I love the fact of everything you shared in your testimony. I appreciate you sharing about that day when I blew, blew the shofar and walked through, it was a direct word from God that he told me to do. And I just wanted to be obedient, you know. Um, but everything that you have left, left in your past, uh, I get it, man. There's things I left in the past. There's things I left in, in that everything I thought I represented, everything I thought I stood for. Um, but you can't have that in Christ. You know, you have to give up citizenship. But... Praise God that he takes us out of the kingdom of darkness and plants us into the kingdom of light. So God bless you, uh, Tyler Cook. Um, another one, uh, Corey Wendland, Dallas. Well, it's not Dallas. Now that I know that's just the address, but um, Corey Wendland, uh, I just want to thank you also. Shout out to you and thank you for writing a letter. Uh, Jay Stoner, Soledad, California. I want to appreciate, I appreciate you uh, writing. Here I am. You know, so we did get your letter. Uh, let's see. Wow, you wrote really small. Is it Eric or Ari Mora in Huntsville, Texas? It's Wayne, 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 Wayne unit. It's, you wrote really small, man. I, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Um, but uh, thank you. Thank you for your letter. And um, I love the fact that I was able, to, I'm able to relate to those that are in segregation or uh, in, in, in the hole or, you know, whatever it is that you call it. Um, 
I think that me experiencing that, it was hard, but now I'm grateful for it because I can relate to so many people um, because it's it's not a fun thing at all, man. Um, Randy Anderson, Springfield, S South Dakota. Um, uh, I love the fact that you say that you lead worship, continue to worship, continue to be there, continue to do what God is calling you to do. And um, I mentioned you last week, I believe, when um, I said that um, you have a woman pastor who's been going there for 32 years, like a spiritual mother. She's 85 years old. I hope you gave her a hug, a pound, a, 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 a thank you from us, from Sharon and I. It's awesome that we have so many people that um, never get recognized, you know, but they go into the prisons to visit those in prison because that's what the scripture says, that when we visit those in prison, we're visiting him. You know, uh, Eddie Dover, thank you so much. There's copies of, of some songs. Appreciate that. Uh, Ghani, Ghani Roderick in Bachman, Unit Bachman in Buckeye, Texas. Um, God bless you. Thank you also so much. And uh, I'm glad you laughed at that neck thing when Sharon uh, started laughing. Carlos Martinez, Weld County Jail, Greeley, Colorado. Uh, thank you. We did get your prayer requests, and they are being prayed for. We added them and gave them to the prayer team. David L. Bautista, Ramsey Unit, Rocheron, Texas. God bless you. I'm still going, man. Uh, Daniel Nunez in uh, CSP Los Angeles, Lancaster, California. We got your photo that's inside. Praying in the name of Jesus for anything, any anything that's coming up, any court dates, whatever it is. Um, we are just praying in the name of Jesus right now for you. In Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, Miguel Ramos, thank you so much for what you sent. We appreciate it, and we know what that means, and that's not an easy thing to do, uh, especially in a place of incarceration, but thank you. Uh, God bless you for being a part of us. Gregory Ivara, ETTF, Henderson, Texas. Uh, I love the fact that you mentioned uh, blowing the shofar. Um, you're the second or third person person that has mentioned that it was a powerful moment and we'll be praying for your son also that's incarcerated uh fernando Toro vargas in scotland correctional institution phoenix phoenix uh maryland you know and god bless you thank you so much for your letter shout out to you jesse shurum Cotella Cotula unit Cotella texas Thank you for writing an encouraging letter uh, for what we do for for here, for you guys, for Pando and Edovo. Um, okay, this is one I want to put to the side. Maybe I'll talk about that today, too. Uh, Leonard Rogue Jr., Troy, North Carolina. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. And I uh, appreciate your letter. And you're right. I, maybe I should start interviewing some of the actors from Always With You. That's a good uh, good request. You know, maybe that's something we could do. Uh, Melanie Hines, um, Chowchilla, California. Uh, we got your prayer request. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. Magnolia Steele, Santa Rosa, California. Thank you so much, uh, Sonoma County. And... Um, for sending this little card. It's like, it's like a, reminds me of like a postcard or something. Um, it says, Dear Holy and Reverend God Almighty, Lord Savior, I pray for all the women incarcerated to receive the peace and comfort provided by the salvation of your son, Jesus Christ. I also pray for the men that are loved by these women in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. That was nice. Thank you. Okay, we're almost to the bottom of the pile here. A couple more. Uh, Neil Mukherjee, Mukherjee, Bill Clemens Unit, Amarillo, Texas. Shout out to you. God bless you. Uh, Mallory Moreno, I believe, in um, Hobby Unit, Mer Marin, Marin, Texas. I can't read it, but thank you so much for your letter. We got it. 
uh, Jesus Gutierrez, Pima County Jail. Um, that's in Tucson, Arizona. I wonder if you are there with Flaco, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Um, Jesus Saavedra, Orange, California. Your letter blessed me, man. Um, I'm glad that the movie Kilroy was uh, a powerful movie for you. I, I pray that it it touched you and moved your heart. I thank you for what you are doing in the name of Jesus and continue. Don't stop. Okay. Um, Gabriel Alvarado, um, all, all red unit. Uh, it was a powerful letter. You know, and I, I praise God for everything that God is doing in your life. So I'm going to leave these three here. Oh, and then the other one, Adolfo Lopez, uh, Carol Young Unit, Dickinson, Texas. And, um, yeah, I read that one, Beaver County Jail, Justin Ferguson, uh, Beaver, Utah. So, okay, let me um, kind of make some sense out of these here. Got this rubber band, so keep them in place. Let's see, put them back in the truck. And then we're going to talk about some of these topics here. It feels weird, man, not being with Sharon, to be honest with you. Uh, part of me wants to get home, but I, I want to give you guys a good podcast, something that's edifying, something that will build you up, but trust me. As soon as I'm done, I'm gone. I'm going to go home. Amen. Okay. So, <clears throat> this one, this letter had some questions. And um, I thought it would be good because here's the thing. If somebody asks questions that pertains just to themselves, then it's something I probably won't answer on a podcast. But many times, some of you ask a good question that even though it's a question you're asking, it can be edifying for a lot of people because maybe a lot of you are asking these questions. And so when I, I, when I come across something like that, I, I want to be able to answer it because maybe it's answering many people's questions. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let me, I should have marked it down, but it's all right. It's okay. Um, okay. I think it was on the second page. And like I said, I, I don't, I'm not going to read it exactly, maybe the question, but the rest, because I don't want to put people in blast if they don't want to be. And, you know, I don't know your situation or anything, but um, I knew, because I wrote on the front that you had a couple questions. So, okay, here it is. Um, this letter, the writer of this letter says, you say that God loves me. Uh, yes, he does. And, and I'm going to get to that because your third question is, is, God created the heavens and the earth. Why didn't he remove the pain of Jesus Christ? That's the first question. Why did God not remove the pain of from Jesus Christ. And here's the answer. If Jesus had not suffered on the cross, you and I would still be lost because blood was required because the Bible says that sin um, requires blood. In other words, okay, every single one of you have been in court. And when you stand before the judge, depending on the crime, there's a certain time that is required for that crime. Uh, maybe you did something and it requires five years. Maybe you did something and it requires a life sentence. And maybe you did something that requires a death sentence, depending on what state you're in. So the Bible says that sin... Um, that sin, the requirement of sin is death. So in other words, even though not everybody's in prison, every person that's breathing right now has been born in sin. 
why do you think we start to die the moment we're born? Because the penalty of the sin that we are infected with is death. But you are a body, soul, and spirit. So because of sin, our bodies are going to die someday. It's like when you go to a grocery store or when you go to commissary, look at your commissary. No matter what it is, it's going to have an expiration date. That's the date that item expires. Well, guess what? Each of us in the spirit have an expiration date. None of us are going to last forever. But thank God that that's our flesh. But our spirit, our soul, who we are, is eternal. So because of that, we want to, we want to surrender our life to the Lord. Why? Very easy. Because we don't have to die. Our flesh is going to die no matter what. But where is your soul going? So Jesus, in order for, so, so in a sense, imagine you're going to court. Imagine you're guilty. And they're going to take you to the death chamber, the gas chamber, whatever it is. And can you imagine if the judge sentences you? And right then and there, they're going to take you to take your life. And can you imagine somebody pushes the doors of the court open? Everybody stops and stares at him. And he walks to the front and says, Judge, yes, I want to die in their place. Um, what do you mean? I, wanna, I want their penalty to be upon me. Why would you do that? Because I love them. See, Jesus took your penalty and my penalty. Everything we have ever done, the worst of the worst, the Bible says that it has been nailed to the cross. See, the Romans didn't nail Jesus to the cross. The Jewish leaders didn't nail Jesus to the cross. Our sins did. We did that. We did that. So the reason he had to suffer was because of the lives that we lived. And if he wouldn't have suffered, we wouldn't have salvation. This is how much this is this is what's so crazy of the fact that he loved us so much that he was willing to suffer and die for us you know what blows me away is when you have somebody in charge of a group somebody calling shots see they want to they want you to expire for them because you're expendable they want you to shed blood for them same thing with war, same thing with kings and presidents, and they will send you to shed your blood for whatever cause. But look at Jesus. He says, I don't want you to shed your blood. I'll shed mine in place for yours. This is why he suffered. Why do you think it's called Good Friday? The day, three days before Easter or Resurrection Day. It wasn't a good Friday that first Friday. It was a good Friday to those after because if it wasn't for his suffering, we would not have salvation. That is why. That is why he suffered on the cross for us. He could have stopped it. He could have stopped it at any time. You know why he didn't? Because he loved us. That is why. Okay. Why does God love sinners like me? Good, good question. It's a question I've asked myself many times in my early walk in Christ. Um, the reason he loves sinners like us is because he knows that 
we have been deceived by the enemy. He knows that the enemy is a kidnapper. He kidnapped us. Have, were you exposed to stuff as a child that maybe you shouldn't have been exposed to? He kidnapped you. If you experienced something that maybe you shouldn't have experienced, he kidnapped you. Why do you think he goes after children? Because he wants to capture you before you even have a fighting chance. I preached this the other day, so I don't want to reiterate, but I almost feel like I have to. But basically, the reason he can forgive you is because he knows that you have lost your identity. Everything you did to get you in that place was because you were deceived. At one time or another, you were told you were this. You were told you were that. You were told you were nothing. You were told that you weren't worth nothing. You were told you ain't nothing but a criminal like your dad and just like your grandpa and all your uncles. You were told you're from this neighborhood. You were told, well, you, you got to sell dope. You, you were told you got to sell your body. You were told because you're worth nothing. You were told, but here's the thing. This is why he can forgive us. Because the deceiver lied to us. Because he sees you for who you truly are. That's why. That is why. He doesn't see you. How do I, how do I put this? The things that you did in your life. Okay, let me, let me start over. Imagine a tree, and if I said, what is the fruit of sin? Imagine this tree with this ugly, rotten fruit on it. And I would say that, what are those? And you would say, well, that, that fruit is, is alcohol, that fruit is meth, that fruit is whatever, you know, drugs or uh, uh, sex or, or power and money and so you're like that's what sin is and I'd say no that's not what sin is that's the fruit of sin see when you are planted in sin then the fruit of that tree is going to be the fruit of sin but the fruit of sin is just it, 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 it's it's an after effect of being planted in sin. So the fruit that you have in your life of the things that you did, that's not your fault in a sense. Don't get me wrong, because we have to stand for our own stuff that we do. We got to pay for our own stuff we do. We got to own the stuff we do. But I'm talking about in a spiritual sense because the things we do on this earth, we have to pay the penalty on this earth, unfortunately. I learned that the hard way. But nevertheless, the things that we did in our lives was the fruit of sin. But that's not what sin is. Sin is the very fact that we are planted in sin. Why do you think it's so important that the Bible says that we have been we have been pulled out of sin or the kingdom of darkness and planted into Christ, into the kingdom of light. See, that's why the Bible says the fruits of the spirit. You can't try to get the fruits of the spirit. Instead, be rooted in Christ. Guess what happens when you're rooted in Christ? What kind of fruit is going to come out of that? When you're planted in sin, guess what kind of fruit you're going to get out of that? So a lot of us, we judge each other by the fruit, not the root. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work from the fruit to the root. It works from the root to the fruit. So if you're rooted in Christ, guess what the fruit is going to be? And you're rooted in sin, guess what the fruit is going to be? So the Lord doesn't judge you by the fruit because you can't help it because where you're planted into that's why we give our life to the Lord, surrender our life to the Lord. So he rips us out of this kingdom of darkness and plants us into the kingdom of light. Therefore, that's why he can love a sinner. Can, can a tree remove itself? If a tree is by the road in a bad spot and it doesn't want to be there, it wants to be by the river, can that tree uproot itself? Why do you think you can't save yourself? 
Why do you think he leaves the 99 to go and seek the one? Because he knows you cannot remove yourself out of the kingdom of darkness. You can't do it. I can't do it. But that's why he takes us, rips us out, and plants us in him. That is why. So I'm hoping I'm answering that question correctly to, to a way that, that you get what I'm saying. Uh, the last question, how can I have that peace that you and your wife have? Um, I just, we just love God, you know. It's not always peaceful. We get on each other's nerves. We get tired. You know, we get exhausted. You know, but ultimately, you know, we have to understand is that we are two imperfect people loving a perfect God. Because if I, if, here's the thing, and a lot of us do this. Let me explain. A lot of us, we hold the person we want to be with, we hold them to higher standards than what we ourselves live by. You know what I mean? In other words, we want perfection from that person, but if the, if the, you have a list of all these things you expect from that person, but if you flip that around, do you fit that list? Do you fulfill that list? And most likely you don't. So just get over it and realize that that person comes with flaws. Well, praise God, because you come with flaws too. So we're two flawed people. So if all I do is concentrate on the flawness and the fact that they're not perfect and they're, you know, uh, uh, focus on the fact that I'm not perfect, we're going to be bumping heads all the time. You want the peace of Christ? Then you got to come to the realization that you are not perfect. That person ain't perfect. That person has to realize you ain't perfect. But so you focus, instead of on each other, you focus on Jesus, the one that is perfect. And you're still going to get on each other's nerves. You're still going to get in disagreements. But you will have that peace of Christ. You know? Um, so... This other question, um, you know, I might approach this one later because I feel like I got to bring some scripture into it, but I, I don't mind talking about it. Um, let's see, where's it at? So basically, um, some preachers say that the, those that are dead, those that have passed away, are now in heaven with Jesus right now. And the question is, um, doesn't, he says, doesn't the Bible teach that we are all to go to heaven on the last day at the last trumpet? Uh, Daniel 12, 2 says, some rise to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. Uh, John chapter 11, Jesus tells Martha and Lazarus will rise. And she says, I know he will rise at the resurrection at that last day. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 55, it says that the last trumpet, we will rise. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, it says that the dead will rise first, and we who are alive will join them in the clouds and will be with the Lord forever. Uh, so this person is asking, which one is it? Uh, are we going to be in the presence of God the moment we close our eyes, or are we all going to be asleep and, um, and then go together? Uh, Obviously, I don't want to uh, do a complete breakdown because I, I didn't get scripture ready. Um, like I said, man, we had Bible study. I'm trying to get home because Sharon is home. I will revisit this. But in conversation, I'm pretending you're sitting right here and you ask me this. Let's say we're having coffee right now, busting a spread, and we're just talking. You ask me this. And let's say I don't have my Bible with me. Okay. You know, and you're just like, hey, you know, what, what do you think? You know, and we're just talking what what we think because like i said i would rather approach it with scripture but i, I feel like it's a good conversation so i would say this it can go both ways obviously those are strong scriptures that lead that 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 state that we will all rise together. Good scriptures. And because of that, that's why I could never 50, you know, 100% say anything different because those scriptures are scripture. The Bible is the Bible. But 
Um, I will say this. Um, there's some other scriptures, and, and let's talk about it, because if we can't ignore these scriptures, we can't ignore the other scriptures. For instance, uh, Jesus is having a conversation, and he says, God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Hmm. So, th- again, that could be taken many different ways. Uh, but that's a powerful verse that could be used to counter that belief that when you die, you just stay asleep. God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Um, another thing is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. So this rich man, again, you know, basically this man was broke and poor and a beggar and had boils on his body and he begged for food. And then you had the rich man and um, they both died. So the one that died that was rich ended up in a place like hell. It was, it was hot. It was dry. And and then he looked up and sees um, Lazarus, the poor one, in Abraham's bosom, which is not heaven. Doesn't really describe what Abraham's bosom is, but it's a place that is clearly not hot. It's clearly not tormenting. He's in peace in Abraham's bosom. And, and the rich man has a conversation. And he says, can you please send Lazarus to dip his finger in cool water and come and cool my tongue that's how that's how tormented he was just a dip of water on his tongue so my question about that is this is clearly the one in this hellish place was very conscious in his torment and Lazarus was very much conscious of him being in a paradise so that's another thing Another third verse is um, the Bible says to be absent of this body, Paul says, is to be present with the Lord. Um, that's another one. So um, stacked on top of that, which is interesting, is first of all, there have been many people that have died and came back. Some of them get saved because they die and they're taken to a place of torment. Um, I don't believe that that is the lake of fire. So so we know that hell and the lake of fire are two different places. How do I know that? Because in the book of Revelation, it says that hell is thrown into the lake of fire. So when people die without Christ, there's a place of torment. They are already being tormented, but that's nothing compared to the lake of fire yet. That's at the end of all things. But nevertheless, they are consciously in a place of, where the worm never stops, where they're gnashing of teeth. And eventually that place is thrown into the lake of fire. Two different places. So do we, and there's other people that have died. And I'm going to give you a firsthand testimony of somebody I personally know, uh, that the moment they died, like clinically dead, I'm not saying had a vision or this and that. Like, for instance, there's, uh, a book of a pastor where he died, I don't know, was it 45 minutes? or I don't remember how long, but he was clinically dead. Like the paramedics came, declared him dead. And um, there was a preacher that saw the accident. So the, the one that was in an accident was a preacher. But another preacher, because there, there was a conference, saw the accident, ran over there, And saw the mangled body of this dead preacher that was declared dead. He tells them, can I pray for him? They're like, he's dead already. But God told him, you need to lay hands on him. Anyways, 45 minutes later, 42 minutes later, something like that, the man comes back. And he tells a story about what he saw. He wasn't asleep. He saw somewhere. And somebody could say, well, that was just a vision. That was just just a flash. He was dead. (laughs) You cannot be dead for more than two minutes without being brain dead. That man should have been brain dead. He did not have no heartbeat, nothing, for 40-something minutes. But he came back, and he shared about what he saw. Now, the other person is um, a pastor, fellow pastor from Grace International. That's our covering. Um, His name is Pastor Rick, and he's out of Reno. And um, he didn't, he's, He's he's a um, 
uh, a coach, a wrestling coach for high school because I think his own son was a wrestler and he's been a wrestler all his life. That's a sport he's been involved with all his life. But anyways, he didn't realize until later on a few years ago that he had a hole in his heart. He had been operating, living like that his whole life he, without him realizing it. But anyways, it was getting worse, getting worse. And finally, he was going to the doctor and trying to figure this thing out. And basically, on the freeway, he tells his wife as he's driving, he goes, I don't feel so good. And he goes, and all of a sudden, boom, like that, I didn't go into a tunnel. I didn't go into darkness. Um, come to find out later, his heart stopped. He died. But he says the weirdest thing was that he was declared dead. And then he came back, and then he ended up dying a second time. Both times, the moment, like, like, blink your eye. Imagine you right now you're in your cell, you blink your eye, and then you're in the mall. Like, just that quick as, as a blink of an eye. Imagine that. He says, this is what I felt. It felt like my eye blinked from this life, and it opened up to this other place. And he describes this place. He describes the colors. He describes everything else. So, you know... I'll, I'll do a teaching, another teaching, another day about it, it's a five five pillar paradigm about uh, making decisions and it, it's five different things. Anyways, one of the things is what does scripture say? What does testimony say? What does the spirit say? What you know? So you put all these things together to come to truth. So, anyways, I feel like I'm all over the place. Um, but as much as somebody can make a case that we all sleep until it's time to go to heaven, I think there's a lot in the Bible that can make the case that we instantly are in the presence of God. Maybe it's not heaven. Maybe it's Abraham's bosom. Maybe it's whatever it is, it's not sleep. We are somewhere because our spirits don't sleep. Our, our souls don't sleep. Um, so anyways, I, hopefully I probably just confuse it even more. But like I said, man, take this as a conversation because um, I don't have scriptures ready. But just take it for the sake of conversation, you know. Um, and this last one. How much time do I got? 53 minutes so far. Um, let's see. Oh, this, this gentleman asked because I had shared a story uh, when I had prayed for um, this young man for his hand to open up. And um, his hand opened up. And the reason it was so miraculous was because years ago he had been attacked with some kind of big butcher knife. So they had to cut this whole part out. So he had like a chunk missing out of his arm. So the nerve wasn't there. So his hand was always like this. And, um, and I prayed and his hand opened up. Uh, this wasn't the only time I have seen God move in a powerful way. This is, you know, I don't ever want to turn this into a healing ministry because I don't want people to follow my teachings because of healings. I want you to follow these teachings because it's the word of God and the word of God is solid. But nevertheless, over time, I'll share with you different experiences that I've seen where God moves. And I'm not talking about just 10 years ago, five years ago. God moves all the time. I just prayed for healing for somebody a little while ago, you know, um, right after Bible study. So it's a normal thing because we should be able to naturally be supernatural, you know. So anyways, this person um, wrote and talks about that, uh, about how I prayed about that. And that person got healed. And then they say, um, he says, I have the same problem. I can't move my left hand or extend my arm from my elbow to my wrist. So I thought this would be a good time um, to train you guys watching. This person, for praying for this person to get healed, many of you others are going to get healed just by watching this. But those of you that don't have any ailment, learn from what I'm about to say. Because if you have given your life to the Lord, the power of the living God is within you. Okay? So 
Um, so anyways, this person asked uh, for healing. Uh, and then he ta- asked about hearing the voice of God also. And, um, and I might save that one for another video. I think I might have talked about that a little bit on one of the other episodes. Um, but I love the fact that, first of all, brother, um, I love your faith that you say that if I pray a healing prayer that you are going to hold the tablet to your heart and receive the prayer. So um, because of that, watch, God is going to move and I can't wait to hear back from you. Um, So let's see. So I'm going to pray for you, but first I'm going to explain as I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity for you guys. Uh, because all of you have it. Now, I want you to, a lot of people think like, what do you mean? I don't have the healing gift. I don't have this or that. I don't have, you know, when you were born, you had legs, but they didn't work. It took you a while to start walking and running, right? You didn't come out of your mother running. Your legs were just, just hanging there. Your hands were just hanging there. Uh, most of you, some of you had a big head. You couldn't even move around. You know, because your head was too big, so you had to hold the, they had to hold your head up as a baby because you didn't even know how to have neck muscles yet, you know. So you were born equipped to run. You were born equipped to pick things up, but yet you couldn't do it. It took growth. It took maturity. It took getting up and holding on to a couch. And then your legs are shaky, you know, and it took all that time to finally get to learn to use what you were born with. Well, guess what? The Bible says that we're born again. You have been equipped already. Let let me show you this. I do have the scripture top of my head here. Oh, that's crazy. I oh, this is how I know it's of God. I literally opened it up to the page. Um, It says here. In Ephesians 1, verse 3. That's crazy. I opened the Bible up. Look, I don't have the thing there. Look, this thing, it's on a different page. You know, the little black, uh, whatever, page holder. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I'm going to read that again. I want you to really grasp this. You have to anchor this in your heart. Anchor this. Anchor this in your Christian walk. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, not who will, not who may be. He says, who has blessed us in Christ. What did he bless us with? Well, the next part of the verse tells us what he blessed us with. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places wow so i'm born again in the same way when i was born i had legs i had arms even though i didn't know how to use them so now i'm born again in the spirit i have been given everything i need to live out this christian walk i already have it okay i get it now what what are you saying pastor david this is what i'm saying Healing is not a lottery. Healing is not something that it needs to happen on a Sunday service when the music is super good and people are worshiping and the Spirit of God is stirring and maybe, just maybe, God will drop a healing on you. No, the Bible says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Is there sickness in heaven? Is there disease in heaven? Sickness cannot be in the very presence of God. So you already have this. This is already in you. This is who you are. So when I pray for a healing, I'm not praying and hoping that healing falls from the sky on you. So if you are not saved... The Spirit in me, the Holy Spirit in me, is going to extend and touch your body and you're going to be healed because He lives in me. The Bible says, greater is He who's in me than He who lives in the world. But if you are saved, then the Spirit in me is going to bear witness with the Spirit in you and we're going to 
pull out your healing from within and it's going to touch your body in the name of Jesus. Another way to think about it is this, is if you had a house, you bought that house. You imagine you worked hard for it, blood, sweat, tears, you bought that house. Imagine you, your house is paid for and then you go to prison. And then you get out and you're like, I'm going to go to my house. And there's the other, other people living in your house. Are you going to knock and be like, hey, um, uh, this is my house. Uh, do you think that maybe we can make an arrangement and maybe, you know, can you get out, please? Can you move out? No, I bet most of you aren't going to do that. You'd be like, man, you got about 30 seconds to grab your stuff because this is my house. Or you come with the sheriff. And the sheriff will say, um, excuse me, this is not your house. I'm serving you an eviction notice. You got two minutes to get out of this house before I arrest you. Because that's your house. You paid for it. Blood, sweat, and tears. Well, guess what? 2,000 years ago, somebody paid for you. 2,000 years ago, somebody was whipped by his stripes we are healed. 2,000 years ago, somebody went to the whipping post in order for you not to be sick. Blood, sweat, and tears already paid for you. So that pain, that sickness does not belong there. That pain, that sickness is going to be served an eviction notice because Jesus paid for that. How dare this sickness be in a place where Jesus already paid for Are you kidding me? This sickness has got to go, and it's got to go right now. This pain's got to go now. This nerve damage, this uh, pancreas that ain't functioning, this spine that is crooked, this hip that is broken, this muscle, tendon, and nerve, this, these headaches, this, this disease, this sickness, this cancer, this leukemia, this AIDS, or whatever it may be, you're about to get served an eviction notice. Simple as that. See, when the sheriff shows up with that eviction notice, man, there's nothing you can say or do. What are you going to do? Fight the sheriff? A thousand more will come. One way or another, you're getting out of that house. So when, we, when I pray for this young man here, well, I don't know how old you are, but I'm just going to say you're a young man. He says, I can't move my left hand or extend my arm from my elbow to my wrist. And I love this. I have faith and believe in Jesus Christ. That's all you need. So without saying who you are, brother, you know who you are. But anybody else, if you are in pain or sick, I don't care if it's a little headache or if you have a disease. If you can, if it's your whole body, put your hand on your body. If it's your elbow, if it's your arm, if it's your neck, wherever it is, I want you to put your hand where that place is right now. I want you to look for it, actually. If it's, if it's a place of pain, look for it. I want you to find that pain, feel that pain. If squeezing your arm makes it the pain, go, go ahead. Make, that, make sure that pain is there right now. Because I, I want you to recognize when that pain is gone. Squeeze it, touch it, whatever, whatever you got to do, find that pain. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be the sheriff. See, the, every sheriff has a badge. And that badge represents the state or the county or the city of wherever it is they represent. And whether you like it or not, that badge represents power. You know, because that's why when you go to court, it'll be like, the state of California, the state of New York, the state of Texas versus you, or the United States of America versus you. That's, it's like, man, all of America's against me, or all of California's against me. That's what it is when you go into court, because that badge represents authority. Well, guess what? I come with something bigger than a badge. I don't need a badge. My badge is the very seal of the Holy Spirit himself, and he comes with authority. So here's another thing. I'm not going to ask 
for that pain or sickness or whatever to leave. I'm not asking nothing. I'm demanding. Why? Because my Lord already paid for that 2,000 years ago. And I'm not going to walk by and let what God already paid for be inflicted on your body. So I'm going to go ahead and pray first. I'm going to start off like this. So let this be a training to you. For if you don't have sickness or whatever and, and, and uh, you want to learn. And here's the thing. The Bible says that to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can't do the recovery part, but you can lay hands on the sick. So as long as we are faithful to do our part, God is going to be faithful to do his. Lay hands on the sick, I'll do that, and they shall recover. God does that. And here's the thing. If, it, if nothing happens, then don't allow your faith to, to go down. Allow your faith to arise and keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Did you give up walking the first time you tried walking? No. You were stubborn and kept getting up and kept getting up, falling on your butt, falling on your butt, kept as a baby. You know what happens after a while? You started to walk. And after you started to walk, you started to run. So don't expect to start to run right now. But you need to start doing it. No baby is going to learn how to walk if it just lays there. So many, so many of us in the spirit, we're not operating in the power we have because we never try to even function in that power we have. So, okay, here it goes. So first, I always start off by thanking God for what he's about to do because I just want to be reverent to the Lord. So in the name of Jesus right now, put your hand where that pain is. In the name of Jesus right now, Lord God, I thank you for what you are about to do, because you are going to demonstrate not only your power, but even more importantly, Lord, you're going to demonstrate your love for them. Because this will be a this will be a signature of how much you love them. Because you're about to heal them, Lord, and I thank you for that. That's the first part of the prayer. Now I'm not praying. I'm talking to your body now. So I thank God for what He's going to do, because He always gets the glory. But now I'm going to talk to your body. In the name of Jesus, whatever is causing pain, whatever is causing sickness, bone, tendon, nerve, organ, eyes, spine, shoulder, hand, wrist, whatever it may be, I command you to be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no cell, no prison, no, no uh, barbed wire, no fence that can stop the power of God. In the name of Jesus, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, I command healing. Organs, I command you to function right now and wake up in the name of Jesus right now. Bones, straighten up. Nerves, straighten up now. Hearts, be restored and renewed in the name of Jesus. Minds, right now, be set forth. Schizophrenia, I command you to leave now. In the name of Jesus, I will not take no for an answer. Clarity to your mind, now in Jesus' name. Foot pain, feet, whatever is causing your feet to hurt, I bring healing and command healing to come forth for your feet to be renewed in the name of Jesus by the power of the living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name, fire. In Jesus' name, now hold off. Allow God to do what he does. doesn't have to be a long prayer. Just allow God to move. The Spirit of God is touching your body right now. Just let it happen. Don't pray. Just receive. Don't pray yourself. Just be a sponge and receive it. Imagine being a dry sponge plunged into a bucket of healing. Mm, in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now look for the pain. If you can't move your elbow, move it now. If you can't lift your arm, lift it now in faith in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. 
If a bone has to shift in your spine, let it shift. Look for the pain. Your eyes, I declare for them to become clear now in Jesus' name. If you are watching this and you are deaf, ears open now. In Jesus' name, ears open. Turn the volume up in the name of Jesus right now. By the power of the living God. Some of you are getting healed right now. Some of you are going to wake up healed. Some of you, the pain was a 10, now it's a 5. Has not completely left, but it's there. In the name of Jesus. Here's the thing. God loved you so much that he brought it from a 10 to a 5. And if he did that, what makes you think he can't bring it to a 0? In the name of Jesus now, more. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, more. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Because you brought it from a 10 to a 5. I pray in the name of Jesus for it to be brought to a 0 now. In Jesus' mighty name. Now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the testimonies that we're going to get, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Use this as a training for those of you. Because many people in those prisons, you're not going to reach them with just words. You're not. That's the honest truth. But when you start to manifest the power of the living God, oh, you'll catch their attention. You will catch their attention. And then you don't catch their attention for anything else but to share the gospel. Then you can say the God that just healed you, loves you, yearns for you, and wants you to surrender your life to him. Because that's what this is all about. Well, guys, I think uh, I'm over an hour. I pray in the name of Jesus that God bless you. I pray you receive something from this. I know I didn't really read a lot of this. I just, I truly just want to get home to Sharon. But, you know, I wanted to give you guys a, a video, a podcast. Um, she sends her love. Thank you so much. God bless you. And uh, see you guys on Sunday service. God bless. Oh. I'm just going to pray out for God. Sorry. Lord, I pray for each and every person that is watching this. Bless them. Lead them. Guide them. Send angels around them to encompass around them, Lord God. Let them be hungry for the things of the Lord. Lord God, let them hate what you hate and love what you love. For those that are facing court dates, I pray in the name of Jesus for favor, Lord God. For those that are seeking out, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for them to find what it is that they're looking for. I thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And last but not least, um, to Flacco, who's in Pima County, Arizona. I, I, I know I mentioned you, and I said I did watch your video You on your YouTube channel. You said to get a hold of me. God bless you. Thank you so much, brother, for that message. Um, I'm glad you guys are watching the videos. Shout out to everybody in Pima County, Arizona. Um, Flacco, take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. You sound like you're, you're in a good spot, but continue. Continue to seek God. Continue to be edified. Continue to read your word. Let the word, you know, transform you, you know. And, um, and I, I'm glad that somehow, some way, that I can still be a voice in your life. So thank you for watching these. For those who are on Edovo, I'm not sure how it's placed, but please understand that we have our Sunday services on here. And we have our, our um, podcast on here. It feels like some of you are watching our podcast, not realizing our services are on here. And some of you on Edover are watching our services, not realizing our podcast is on here. So, guys, make sure. I don't know how it works. I wish I knew, you know. Um, but just know that that stuff is on there, and hopefully you're getting both of those. Uh, on Edovo, they only let me upload once a month. So usually around the first week, I upload a month's worth of, of, of stuff for you guys, and then I have to wait till the next month to upload. But um, anyways, God bless you. Thank you so much. See you later.